there, there are a couple of different areas that it, it plays a factor in. One is besides the actual construction of the project, you've got to have uh, uh, its site utilization for storage of materials, uh, storage of equipment and such because uh, uh, and uh, you know if you're working in a very tightly confined space where you don't have uh, a lay down area for storing materials then all of a sudden you've got to have off-site storage someplace and then you're just bringing things in just in time. Besides that is uh, site access and making sure that you've got uh, if you're doing something at the other extreme where you're out uh, we do a lot of construction of uh, water and wastewater treatment plants and so those are typically out out in the middle of nowhere or uh, and so you're having to make sure you've got all weather access to bring in equipment and supplies and materials. The, the most crucial part of it is uh, uh, just your your prior planning uh, for one and uh, uh, because it's real easy to eat up profit in a hurry if you're having to redo things two or three times. It, a lot of it comes into play of just uh, the experience of the superintendents on, on the job site. Uh, and um, you develop a you know, major reliance on them to, uh, to, know. to know what all they've uh, they're going to encounter and, and such. Um, but during the, uh, we do a lot of our projects are competitively bid. So during the bidding process, we're going to uh, kind of war game those scenarios to make sure that we've got money included in our bid to, uh, to cover access roads. And, yes. and so we'll do a little bit of that planning ahead to make sure uh, if we see any issues that we need to address of well they're saying they're going to let us go right here but we know from our prior experience we're going to need to make the road longer to be able to, to account for bigger trucks or because of the grades and, and such that we're going to need to you know take a roundabout way to get onto the site just because of the, the topography. Usually the, the change that, that occurs is due to um, it may be the phasing of the project that in order to uh, either um, initially our access to the site may be uh, from one location and because of planned uh, development we may have to be forced to bring in a new, uh, a different location, but generally you try to um, <clears throat> make your access, your site plan, be one that'll last you through the project, mm -hmm. you know, because it, it's just a matter of efficiency, you know, you don't want to end up uh, doing things twice if you can avoid it. get into a, a really large project, you know, something massive like the Kyle Field expansion, then you're you're dealing with uh, a, a lot more planning goes into it, but on a lot of your your projects up to the you know ten million dollar range, twenty million dollars, you're it's really being dictated to you by just your site constraints, the space, the space that you've got. The superintendent that's going to be on site, he's going to be the one that is going to have on site supervision and responsibility for what all goes on in orchestration of that. Um, so he'll, you know, it's his site to run and, and he'll dictate where he wants materials to be stored. Um, on a larger job, then you'll end up with some foreman that'll, that'll have uh, specific responsibility over. Uh, particular portions of the project. Yeah, it comes back to the scheduling and you have your weekly meetings with your on-site uh, subcontractors. Um, 
you'll have, uh, and then there will be typically monthly uh, construction meetings that go on with the engineer and the owners. Um, but it never fails. You may have have told your a supplier to um, to deliver materials to this site, or to call ahead. You know, call the superintendent before you make that delivery, and never fails. You know, you'll have a few of these suppliers that they'll show up in the parking lot here, ready to make a delivery of. Um, some equipment. It's like, what are you doing here? You're, <laughs> and uh, so it's having them uh, jump through hoops. A lot of times, put up flagging around uh, uh, existing structures that you're trying to uh, keep people away from, um, and having. Uh, you know, people on the ground, if you've got heavy equipment, for instance, that where you're doing work, having a, a man on the ground, it's just his sole job is, is to, to keep that, that uh, equipment operator from uh, backing up too far. What we ended up with on a project, we actually brought in, uh, set up some, some remote cameras and uh, that were filming. Um, and some of them, you know, and I think we had a motion sensor that was on there that would also sound an alarm if there was traffic on it, if folks actually came in on the site. Well, typically, you know, right off the bat, you're, you're having a building permit that you've got to pull. Um, you've also got your, um, for NPDES, the Stormwater Pollution Prevention, you have to file an NOI, which is a notice of intent um, to uh, that you're going to start start work out there, and, and that's supposed to happen before any any dirt is uh, disturbed. Building permits, um, depending upon the locale of when you've got to pull a permit, uh, some cities will require that the that you have your building permit before you even start clearing. Um, others don't require it until you actually begin construction operations. The major one that you, you'll see on every project site is uh, silt fencing that, that gets used. Um, at times it gets overused because it uh, never fails. It'll be It'll, it'll blow out because there's just it won't hold back all the water that's coming to it. Um, other things that you'll end up using are uh, are check dams to uh, collect the water and let it pool so that you know silts and fines will start to settle out before it ends up going off. And uh, rock filter dams that will um, uh, the water will pond up behind and then. Uh, has to flow through this dam in order to uh, to get off the site.